Hey everybody, this is Chris. Today I'm going to show you how to make a scroll saw. I'll go over part selection, design and construction, and learnings and mistakes. I'm going to follow the same approach for this project as I did with the foot power lathe. I'm going to collect as many parts as I can at auctions and flea markets and then try and just fit them all together. Now in this case, I got this sewing machine base for $20 at the flea market. And then I really lucked out. I got this scroll saw assembly at an auction for $40. Now I would have I would have gladly paid more than 40 for this assembly because I just love the challenge of fitting all this together and making it work. So the real challenge for this project was to figure out how to get the power from the foot pedal to the assembly. I originally was going to come through the top with the leather belts and then try and transfer the power over on top, but because this bar is on this side of the bracket, it would have got really complicated in here. So I decided to go underneath. Now I have many, many parts from the flea market. And I was lucky enough to have this. And this is perfect, because I can mount it underneath, have a pulley on one side for the leather, and then transfer the power over. Now I hate using bolts and screws and nails and glue and all those things, because I think it's cheating. I'd rather find creative solutions. But in this case, the area is so limited, I really had no choice. Now I have two objectives for this shaft end. Number one, I want to install a smaller pulley to increase the speed. And secondly, it has to have enough meat so I can have a shaft come out on this side so I can mount the flywheel, which will maintain the momentum from the foot-powered pedal. And of course, the flea market giveth. This is the perfect pulley. I don't know what these are called, but obviously the leather belt is going to be pinched in here, which will help drive it. And it's got a nice meaty side on it, and I can put a shaft on there. Now this shaft setup is not ideal. It really should have a support on this side. But as long as the flywheel I use is not too heavy, it should work just fine. And I have a lot of flywheels. Now the flywheel I'm going to use is not a flywheel at all. It's a wheel from an old metal dolly but it's a small diameter so it will spin quickly and maintain the speed and the momentum that I want to have for the saw. Now the hole is too big for the shaft so I had to use a spacer. Now I'm going to install the leather belt and for that I'm going to use electrical tape and a paper clip.
Now things are starting to get a little complicated. I've already sprayed the parts with belt dressing, which will make it sticky so the belt won't slip, but I still need an idler, and there's not much space in here. So I have two requirements. Number one, I want it mounted from the top, so nothing gets in the way here. And secondly, I want it to be adjustable. Now that was a real challenge, so I had to come up with some pretty creative solutions. All right, let's go over the idler design in detail. For the idler itself, I wanted a wheel that was lightweight and turned easily, so I used a skateboard wheel. For the adjustable portion, I had this screw that already had a handle on it and another piece that went with it. It's pretty easy to mount the wheel to the piece, and now this can be adjustable. Now recall I wanted this mounted from the top, and so I had to create what I call the stack. At the top of the stack and on top of the base is this large washer, and this is wide to keep it from moving from side to side. The bottom of the stack consists of this open face bearing, I'm not sure of the technical name, Then I have a washer inside of it and this presses up against the bottom of the base and so I can mount it tightly and it won't move so it'll be very stable and secondly I'll be able to rotate it so I can have an adjustable idler. Now I have to get this set up onto this screw. So continuing the stack I have this pulley that fits perfectly inside of there and it also fits the screw Then I have another pulley that's smaller that has a set screw on it and I press that up against there and now I can mount this tightly and so here's my stack and I've got the base in between where my fingers go and I can still rotate this so it's adjustable but also it will not move very much so it can be supported fully from the top. Now I've transferred the power from the foot pedal up and over. Now I'm going to install the scroll saw. And on the front side I'm going to use this bolt that I modified. For the back support, I wanted to make a custom bracket. So I went to the flea market and got a music stand for $2, and that worked perfectly.
the next step I took this plumbing fitting which had threads that matched the shaft here and I drilled a hole as close to the center of this as I could. And then I took the music stand stem and made the linkage to connect to the scroll saw. At this point, I was pretty excited. <laughs> and then I realized my first mistake. The mistake was, I could only drill so close to the center of this, and I ended up with a stroke that was way too long for the linkage. It put too much stress on the blade, and I broke two of them before I figured it out. Now this is an example of what I had to do. I took the fitting and cut off all the extra material to lighten it up. So now I just have this piece. And then I took a piece of steel and mounted it to the front of the bracket. So this is the part that's spinning. And then I drilled a couple holes at different lengths that are offset from the center until I got the right stroke length. And so now, instead of the blade moving up and down way too far and being unsupported and breaking, it just moves a little bit but very quickly and that keeps it from breaking. Now for my second learning slash mistake. I started to use it again and I broke two more blades. And upon inspection I found that the blade itself was not pulled very tight. And that's because there's a crack back here, and so the tighter I tried to make it, the more it spread out. So I glued and clamped this, and that fixed that problem. Now for my third and final learning slash mistake. I started to use it again and then I broke two more blades. That's a total of six. But this was truly a rookie mistake. You see, before I built this scroll saw, I had never used one before. And I realized I had the blade upside down. So the flat portion of the blade was going up, which would pull the board up and cause the blade to break. So I got the flat portion on the down stroke and that would hold the board in place and then the blade didn't break anymore. I hope you found this video helpful. I gotta say this is one of my favorite builds ever. It looks amazing and it works amazing. And I'm so happy I was able to share it with you. Please subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Chop with Chris so you don't miss out on any of my future projects. I've also included at the end and in the description section a video on how to make a foot powered lathe. Thank you. This is the final idler design. It's intended to be a floating idler, so it moves based on the tension of the belt.